Hi everyone, my name is Charlie and today I am going to be sharing my overall thoughts on The Miseducation of Evie Epworth by Matson Taylor. This book was released in July and I have previously read the NetGalley edition but I wanted to read it again because this book appeals to every single sensibility within me and I will tell you for why momentarily. This book is a comic novel set in 1962 and follows Evie Epworth who is at a crossroads in her life. She lives in the Yorkshire Dales in a farmhouse and has just completed her O-levels. Her father is in a relationship with a new woman called Christine and Evie is feeling somewhat pushed aside and as though people who don't have her best interests at heart are trying to force her into a path in life that she doesn't necessarily want to take. In the beginning of this novel we have a hugely comic scene in which, in the beginning of this novel, we have a hugely comic scene involving Evie, her dad's MG and a field full of cows and this really sets the tone for the rest of the novel. This reminded me of classic British comedy. I keep saying to people when I discuss this book that if you've read any of my books then this will be something that you will enjoy because Mattson Taylor has managed to do exactly what I have been trying to do all of these years with R. Doris. He has got this voice that ties in so well with the voice used in classic British comedy and again I use this when I talk about Joanna Cannon but it's apt here as well that whilst reading this I was reminded of Alan Bennett and I was reminded of Victoria Wood because Matson Taylor has a comedic timing within his prose that as I was reading it I could just imagine how it would be spoken. I feel as though this book as an audiobook would be fantastic listening if you found the correct actor or audiobook narrator who is able to evoke this sense of northern comedy. One big thing that we see in northern comedies and in the classic British comedies are the strong women at their core and we get so many strong women in this book, not, not just with Evie who I think hasn't yet figured out who she is but we have a lot of people who have chosen their own destiny or are in the process of figuring out their destiny. We have the character of Mrs Swithenbank. I don't know how to explain Mrs Swithenbank, she has such an iconic name and is barely in the book really, yet when I think about this book I think about that name. It might just be that it's the name Doris that sticks with me and that's why I remember Mrs Swithenbank. But I feel like all of the characters have this very great sense of character. You know who they are, you know this type of person and I felt like that throughout. We have Evie's next door neighbour, Mrs Scott Pym, this lady who Evie goes to and she learns tales of her mother and she gets to see this woman baking and this Mrs Scott Pym has really taken on this kind of grandmotherly role in Evie's life. So much of the older female characters in here and Evie visiting them reminded me so much of my childhood when I would go around and I would visit my older relatives and there would always be that thing of the smells and the certain rooms that seemed off limits and when you got to go into those rooms it made you feel somewhat more grown up but also there was this sense of finally being allowed into somebody's sanctum sanctorum but also this feeling like you can't touch anything and I feel like that was captured here well and this sense of community and the emotions that these characters feel for one another and the way they feel about each other was just brilliant to read about and again was so reminiscent and nostalgic for me. I loved the things that Mattson Taylor would mention because whilst it's 1962 and I was born 30 years later I have knowledge of these things. It's strange to see this and think about 1962 will have been the year that my grandmother was meeting my grandfather and around the time that they were going to get married and that sort of thing and I just think about that era. The 1960s is a place I always think of fondly and an era that I think of fondly and I think it's become so iconic to people because of everything that happened during that decade in terms of music and just history and film and 
<sighs> I just think that Mattson Taylor captured it all well and it was great to see it talked about with such love and adoration for an era. And this also felt like a love story not just to Yorkshire but to the strong northern women that I know so many children from the north have been raised by. I feel as though sometimes the sense of community can be missing from a book, yet it felt like it was here. And there was a great scene set at the village fete. And yes, a WI is mentioned, and yes, that might have thrilled me somewhat, having written about WIs for 10 years now. In this scene at the village fete, the writer does something so well in managing to evoke how we talk about people in such a few words, but we're already able to get an accurate impression of who that person is. We've seen it done in comedy tons. It's a technique that I have used as well. I just adored seeing it here because it gave me that added level of community and comedy. And so Evie is talking about the women and describing them to you. And firstly, we have Mrs. Thornycroft, petite, clairvoyant, gamine. And after this, we move on to Mrs. Gaythorne, bad perm, flower arranger, suspected nudist. And it's that sort of thing where the writer brings everything down to the few things you need to know about a person and you get who that person is. And I just felt like Matson Taylor really understood every single character he was writing about and even the side characters, even the people who were only there for decorative purposes to help to colour the story. I felt as though I knew that person and I could figure out, and the author did as well, and the author would be able to tell you an entire story about this side character and I love that and I really appreciate seeing that in fiction. I say that this is the perfect book for me because it has a voice I can recognise that is such a strong voice that I was laughing at times, stopping to read lines aloud, enthusing about characters with my family members, and my family don't read, and yeah, I just, I felt like I needed to share this with everybody. I felt like I needed to introduce these characters to other people and I'd love to have been able to meet them. It's such a hopeful story and having Christine in there as an antagonist and the scrapes that Evie gets into as she tries to thwart Christine and Christine tries to thwart her as well, they felt, I know that they had been featured in other stories and this isn't anything new, this fight between a stepmother and a possible stepchild, but I didn't care about that and I didn't care about the predictability of the story knowing where it was going to go. There are aspects that were in here that I'd guessed and that didn't matter because Mattson and Taylor writes in such a way that this felt like Evie's version of that story. This felt like it was incredibly real and I am just filled with adoration for this story not just because of the nostalgic quality that it has, the comedic quality, the timing and the prose that is just... I feel as though Mattson Taylor has listened to people talk and he has a great fondness and love for the way we tell stories in the North and I don't see it represented in fiction often so to see it represented here just warmed my heart and it's definitely going down as one of my favourite books of the year. I can honestly see myself rereading it because this brought a smile to my face that hasn't happened since I read Furiously Happy. My adoration for this book knows no bounds. It reminded me of people in my life who aren't around anymore and I was incredibly grateful for that and grateful for the opportunity to revisit the types of people who helped to shape me and shape so many children in the North. We all know the characters within this story and it just felt so heartfelt, so comic. And I am incredibly grateful that this book exists and I hope that more readers discover it. I forgave the book any of its faults because it had such a strong voice and I recognised what the writer was trying to do. I don't think that I can say any more than that. Once again, 
if you've read any of my works and enjoyed them, you are going to love The Miseducation of Evie Epworth as much as I did. Just know that it is a complete love story to Yorkshire and the North. And I'm from Cheshire, I know. But Yorkshire has proven to be one of my favourite places. And to see it talked about in such a fashion is brilliant. And I wish the author every success and really look forward to seeing what he produces in future. So, if you've read this book and would like to discuss it, then please feel free to do so in the comments. I hope that you have enjoyed this video, and until next time, that is all.